Hey, what's up? It's Robert Fithin, and today I want to talk about compilation albums, you know, so I thought I'd wear this shirt. I thought it'd be appropriate, you know, I'm trying to dress like the video, so I thought a shirt with a bunch of stuff looked like it's just all stitched together from different places would be perfect to talk about the best of the greatest hits. Now, I want to talk about the compilations that were out at the time, you know, like they, these were part of people's vinyl record collections. A lot of these were treated like they were, you know, like regular legitimate albums that they sold with some of them in the millions. I want to start off with a perfect example, The Eagles, Their Greatest Hits, 1971 to 1975. This came out in 1976, and everybody had this. Even people, like my sister, this was the only rock album that she had, you know, or even leaning rock. And I think it was because of the song Lion Eyes had just become a country crossover. That was released the year before, so then, you know, all those country fans that were new to The Eagles... Uh, this was perfect for them to discover songs like Take It Easy and uh, Peaceful Easy Feeling and Tequila Sunrises that, that could have been country hits if they were on the charts. But yeah, this, this was the top-selling album of all time for a while when they counted compilations in there. The Eagles, their greatest hits, 1971 to 75. It does not have Hotel California or, or you know Heartache Tonight or New Kid in Town. Those are all later. They did have an Eagles Greatest Hits Volume 2. It was okay. People bought it. People liked it. It was all right. It did well. But this is iconic. This is this is huge. And this is the kind of compilation I'm talking about. Things that were released while the songs were still somewhat fresh. Everybody had it. Perfect example, the Eagles. Second place right here, Elton John's Greatest Hits from, I believe, 74 this came out. Uh, this came out right after um, the double album, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, but it had all those singles on it. So if you could not afford your kid, you know, you can't afford a double album... This was a great way to get those singles immediately following, you know, that release with this one. And it's got all the hits. Your song, Honky Cat, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Border Song, Crocodile Rock, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, Rocket Man, Benny and the Jets, you know, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Huge, huge, huge. And like the Eagles, this is, this is the first Elton John I ever had. This is how I was introduced to him. I think that's the way it is with a lot of compilations. Like this one from the Steve Miller Band. This was absolutely huge. And again, released at the time. Uh, Greatest Hits, 1974 to 78, was released in 1979. This is a really interesting release. First of all, very generous of Capitol Records. These songs are still relatively new, and they're putting 14 songs on here. Incredible. Now, you got to watch out for later releases that are shorter. They take off like four or five songs. But this original one with 14 songs, not only do you get the singles like, you know, Jungle Love and Take the Money and Run and, uh, you know, Jet Airliner, but you also get great, I love the song Serenade. From Fly Like an Eagle, that's on here. The Steak is on here. Wild Mountain Honey's on here. Dance, Dance, Dance. You get great album tracks, too. It's really strange because this is just two albums. It's Fly Like an Eagle and Book of Dreams, and then The Joker, the single The Joker, is thrown in. So it's basically just two albums with The Joker, but a lot of great music on here. You do have single edits of Fly Like an Eagle, and you don't have the, uh, the threshold with Jet Airliner, but it's 14 songs, so it's pretty cramped. But yeah, love this. Definitely a part of a lot of people's record collections. Steve Miller Band's uh, greatest hits. Wow. Neil Young, show them how it's done. This is how it's done when you're Neil Young. A three-album set called Decade that was released in uh, 1977. And uh, it, it, not only, of course, Neil Young's solo stuff, but his days with uh, Buffalo Springfield, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. I mean, six sides on here, and it just doesn't end with all the great songs. You get great album tracks like The Loner and uh, uh, After the Gold Rush. Helpless is on here. Uh, Tonight's The Night is on here. The big songs like Cinnamon Girl and um, Harvest and Heart of Gold, they're all on here as well. Like I said, everything up to 77, you get, the, you get this great little raw number called Down to the Wire that kind of starts off as kind of this just kind of offshoot thing and then it just gets really good burned and uh broken arrow i mean the buffalo springfield album tracks on here decade from neil young just a great compilation more like a, an extended thing though you know not like the little concise ones i showed you but super popular people found the money to buy this somehow and uh, a lot of people did i'm not sure who that is on the front there i don't think that's neil young but great album cover there as well and the handwritten stuff on the inside is uh is great too i can't you know, I want to pull all this apart, but yeah, the, the handwritten really gives it that kind of personal touch because with some of these later compilations, like the ones that are all over the place now, I mean, the artists have nothing to do with these. So it's nice to see ones where the artists are actually involved. Similar to the Neil Young one is the history of Eric Clapton. This was released, I think, in 72. And this, he's such a journeyman, to quote his own compilation name. Um, <clears throat> he's been in all these different bands. So it's nice to have all this scattered stuff kind of put together. And again, right at the time, Layla is on here. Layla was only a year old 
when this was released. And of course, you get his stuff like Sea of Joy with uh, Blind from Blind Faith is on here. You get his stuff with the Blues Breakers. You get Cream on here as well, Crossroads and Sunshine of Your Love. History of Eric Clapton from 1972. A lot of people had that as well. Wow, is this a big seller. Love this. Sly and the Family Stone's Greatest Hits. I first had this on an orange 8-track and played it over and over again. I mean, this has got pretty much everything you want unless you want to also kind of complement it with the uh, There's a Riot Going On album, which kind of has its own kind of murky, kind of muddy feel. A little taste of that is on here with Thank You for Let Me Be Myself Again, which is an incredible song. Uh, I Want to Take You Higher, Everyday People, Dance to the Music, Hot Fun in the Summertime. Uh, I mean, Sing a Simple Song. Uh, everyday people that I already say that when they're all on here and um, makes for a great uh, a great positive listen I'm, I don't have kids you know but if I did I would think this would be a great great album to play for like the kids you know everybody on the family trip or whatever there's just a lot of positive messages you can make it if you try you know a lot of great great songs in there for the, like a family uh, Jimi Hendrix experience came out with smash hits uh, again right after Electric Ladyland in case anybody could not afford that double album but wanted to get all along the watchtower here it is. Uh, and of course, Purple Haze and a bunch of stuff that wasn't previously released or easy to find in the U.S. Like uh, Stone Free and um, 51st Anniversary. Uh, great stuff on here. Red House. So it was kind of like a, kind of a half compilation, but also kind of a place where, like I said, you could get Jimi Hendrix experience stuff that you couldn't get elsewhere at the time. So uh, 1969 for this? 70 for this? Has a different cover on the re-release. Has like a Western thing that's more like on the back here. But I like this. I don't like that where they're pulling up to the Ponderosa or whatever on the front cover. Now, this is okay. This is pretty cool. This is real concise. But this came out in 1978, and a lot of people had this as well. This was actually the first Jimi Hendrix I ever had when I heard this played in its entirety on the radio. Look at that track listing. It's pretty much Are you Ex a lot from Are You Experienced and then the best of everything else. This does not have Hey Joe on it though but i guess that's a not a it's a cover song maybe that's why but yeah are you experienced third stone from the sun i'm so happy that's on here um voodoo child slight return my favorite Jimi hendrix song probably if six was nine bold as love is on here that doesn't show up on a lot of compilations that's probably my second favorite Jimi hendrix song you get this nice uh, inner sleeve if you have the uh, second edition i didn't want the first edition i actually wanted the second one because you get this nice uh, inner sleeve that the first edition doesn't have. But yeah, the essential uh, Jimi Hendrix. Of course, there's all kinds of Jimi Hendrix CDs, compilations you can get now. But if you want something that was out, not right at the time. This came out in 78, I think. But or in the 70s, we'll say. If it was out in the 70s, this is a great one to have. And of course, this was followed up by Volume 2, which has you know a lot of great stuff on there as well. Man, Janis Joplin's Greatest Hits. First Janis Joplin I had was this one. I think a lot of people were like that. You get all the hits, you know, without the, uh, you know, you know, because, uh, you know, you get a lot of the band stuff on the Full Tilt Boogie and some instrumentals and some kind of lesser songs on the, on some of the early, like the Cheap Thrills. But this is just boom, 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 one after the other, all, all the ones you want. Uh, Peace of My Heart, you know, uh, Summertime. Of course, me and Bobby McGee is on here. Uh, Try a little harder, Cry Baby, Move Over, uh, the live, um, Ball and Chain from Winterland. I have a uh, reissue of this that came out for a record store day a few years ago on this cool uh, smoke green vinyl. I love that. It sounds uh, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> I love the smoke green vinyl, though, as it's spinning around. But yeah, Janis Joplin's Greatest Hits. And what a cover. I love that. I wish they would have kind of done something else besides put the same picture on the back, but I love that cover. Janis Joplin's Greatest Hits. A lot of people had that. Um... I don't know how many people had this or how, how successful this was, but this is the Doors scenes from the uh, weird scenes from the gold mine. Whoops, I got it upside down. <laughs> Didn't even realize it. Uh, <clears throat> weird scenes from the gold mine. This came out in, I think, uh, 72, 73. And what this is, a lot of people are kind of confused because this has kind of a strange track listing on it. You can check it out. What this has on it is a lot of album tracks from their earlier albums and then the hits from L.A. Woman. And the reason that is like that is because this is basically a companion piece to the Doors 13 album, which wasn't a huge seller, but it was their first compilation. I don't think it sold well because it's called 13. It's not called like greatest hits or the best of, or you know, whatever that came later. So this is a companion to the Doors 13. So there are no songs in common. So that album already had all the hits before uh, the LA Woman album. So this album kind of takes up the slack, but it also has Break On Through 
on it, which is not on 13, but that's why it doesn't have any of those touch me or hello, I love you or anything. I light my fire or none of that's on here because that was all on the original one, but it does have a couple of uh, rare tracks and it's a weird listen because it's just all of these weird album tracks together. So it's really interesting. Again, I don't know how successful that was. You know, the Doors had so many compilations because people were kept, people kept discovering the Doors. You know, you'd have this generation discover them. So they'd have to do this. This is when they came out in 85. This is after MTV started playing them. <laughs> An MTV hype sticker on a Doors album. This is a uh, classics, just basically another Doors compilation. There became no shortage of them uh, after a while. But um, the one I showed you earlier, the, uh, the 13 up there, that was the very first one. Rolling Stones. Yeah, they had this one. This is great. This is their early stuff. There's the uh, English cover and then there's the U.S. cover. For big hits, High Tide and Green Grass, of course, you get, you know, their early stuff. Satisfaction is on here, and uh, uh, 19th Nervous Breakdown, and uh, Lady Jane, Get Off My Cloud, some other blues covers, followed by this one. This is a great album all on its own. Again, released at the time. You know, Jumpin' Jack Flash is the single. This is the only way to get Jumpin' Jack Flash and Honky Tonk Women at the time, because those are 45-only releases. So this is like a basically, I'll put this up as an album, even though it's a comp. I mean, you got those two singles that you could only get here at the time and all the other great songs on here, like, uh, you know, uh, Street Fighting Man is on here and um, uh, what's the, She's a Rainbow, you know, all the, all the later ones. But I think they outdid these both when they came out with this double album. Just put them both together and call it Hot Rocks. Man, what a great compilation this is from the Rolling Stones. And again, from the time, and a lot of people had this. This is from 72, and it goes up to 1971. So Brown Sugar, when this is out, is a couple of years old. It's a year old. It's, it's not like this is some compilation of, you know, ancient songs. Awesome compilation from the Rolling Stones. All their big songs. you got to watch out. Some versions of this have, a, have the organ version of Time Is On My Side, and some have the guitar version. So, But yeah, I mean, you know the Rolling Stones hits. There they all are. <laughs> all of the ones from abco pretty much uh, are on here and uh yeah it just doesn't stop you put this on it's an instant friggin' party the uh live version of midnight rambler is also on here of course get off my cloud uh, i mentioned time is on my side jump a jack flash paint it black can't get no satisfaction mother's little helper it goes on and on and on and on rolling stones hot rocks you gotta love that here's a here's an example of just a little bit too late this wasn't a big seller and this is kind of a weird compilation from Cold Gems, which was the Monkees label. This came out in 1969, a year after Daydream Believer was the hit. So this is Daydream Believer's the first song. This is the Monkees' greatest hits. It has Pleasant Valley Sunday, a little bit you, a little bit me. She, you know, I'm a believer. Valerie, I'm not your stepping stone. Last train to Clarksville. It does not have the theme from the Monkees, though. And it does not have any pictures of the Monkees. What a strange cover. It looks like Halloween. This is it, orange and black? and just I think this might have been a thing to try to make them as a, more of a group and get away from their comedy TV show image, which their TV show was done by this by 1969. It was canceled. They had the movie Head, which was, you know, from what I understand at the time, which came out, was ignored, and then forgotten. It didn't really get any respect until much, much later on. But, yeah, this was just, like, bad timing for that. No one cared. <laughs> and bad at cover art. I mean, cool, but weird. The Who, big, meaty, uh, big and bouncy, baby. This is the one with all their early stuff on it. A lot of, uh, again, like Rolling Stones, a lot of uh, singles on here collected that weren't previously. Oh, this is a later pressing. This is a rainbow pressing. Uh, a lot of uh, singles on here that weren't on albums before, different versions of stuff, and a huge, huge release from The Who. Of course, they would have so many compilations after this. I mean, one every four years, another Who compilation would come out. It's like, these are the same songs. This is the one that kind of started it all in the U.S. and is considered a classic album on its own. Of course, Hooligans, the two-album version, if you want to dig a little deeper. And a little bit later, this one goes all the way up to like songs like Who Are You and The Song Is Over and Squeeze Box, later songs like that from The Who on this Hooligans. I got an older one of this, too, or newer one of this. Hooligans compilation. And like I said, though, The Who just kept putting them out, putting them out, putting them out. I mean... Only person I know with more compilations than The Who at the time, probably this guy. 
RCA, man, they kept putting them out. But this was the very first one. This is Elvis Presley's Golden Records. This had uh, Hound Dog and uh, Loving You and Love Me, Jailhouse Rock, Heartbreak Hotel, That's When Your Heartaches Begin, Don't Be Cruel, Treat Me Nice, bunch more, 14 songs. They're all on here. If you want the very first pressing, get it in light blue here. If this is in white, it's a later pressing. But yeah, Elvis's Golden Records. That was his very first one, but there are no shortage <laughs> of compilations Elvis Presley, but a lot of people had that one. But this is the one with the iconic cover, the one that followed it. A lot of people, you know, this is this is a nudie suit because a, a, a group named Nudie designed it. So that's the nudie suit. So if you ever hear of a nudie suit, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about something that makes you look naked. They're talking about Elvis Presley's gold lame suit here on the cover of this. So yeah, 50,000 Elvis fans can't be wrong. Elvis's Golden Records, Volume 2. And that's all I'll show of Elvis, because like I said, man, you could do a whole video on nothing but Elvis Presley compilations. How about these guys? They had had, uh, you know, the Beatles' greatest and a collection of Beatles' oldies but goodies in uh, the UK, Germany, other places. But uh, the Beatles, 1962 to 1966, was the first time the U.S. got a compilation, of the, a legitimate one anyway, of the Beatles on uh, Apple. What a great comp, too. I would I would say start off with this. If you don't have any Beatles, start off with this one. Why not? Get all their great singles in there. Get all, you know, because they've got a lot of singles that aren't on albums. And, of course, you've got the blue one to follow it up with. There's always the question, which do you like more, the red or the blue? Well, I like the songs on here more, I think. They're more, you know, they're more of the classic kind of rock songs. But I think this album is a better listen. I think this album makes more sense. This album was a bunch of great singles and a bunch of hits. This album is like a lot of album tracks thrown in, and it just kind of sounds like uh, I'm, a one, I'm ready to hear the next song on the album, and it skips seven songs ahead. So I didn't grow up with this one either, so I'm not, I, I don't have any like nostalgia for this album. Uh, I love the artwork. I love the little gimmick here, but I hate this. It's like, why couldn't they do something different with the back? Like, this photo like has nothing to do with this the music on this album the music on this album ends in 1966 but my, minor complaint there i hate the back <laughs> the back artwork but yeah beatles you know a lot of people that's how they had the beatles were those two of course capital saw the success of that next year double disc from the beach boys called endless summer how do you do a compilation for the beach boys and not put good vibrations on it weak i don't know who had this but i bet they were disappointed not only is it the Beach Boys, but it doesn't have good vibrations. Uh, it also has a uh, the album version of Help Me Rhonda, which is different from the single. I bet most people would probably want the single version of Help Me Rhonda that starts off with the vocals. This is the lesser known version that starts off with the uh, guitar. It's not as good, in my opinion. Oh, here's a good one. Moving into the rock stuff. Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. This was my first Alice Cooper. Now, he's got so many great album tracks like Halo of Flies and Alma Mater and, uh, you know, uh, uh, what Looney Tune. I love that. None of those are on here. This is just the hit singles, but they're great. One after another. I'm 18, Is It My Body, Desperado, Under My Wheels, Be My Lover, uh, School's Out. I mean, that's just side one. Awesome. No More Mr. Nice Guy. I mean, Billion Dollar Babies. It goes right up to Muscle of Love, and then it ends. Just where it should. You got to love that. And yeah, I love this. man. I don't know about the artwork. Kind of a 1940s Chicago motif there, but or 30s, but uh, or maybe 20s. I guess that's more like late 20s, early 30s Chicago. Humphrey Bogart there. But uh, Alice uh, Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. That's a, that's a good, and it sounds, that, my copy at least, sounds great. Now here is one that a lot of people don't care for because they know that Black Sabbath was not involved with the making of this at all. And we're kind of surprised when it was already out in stores, uh, but I love it. This is how I was introduced to Black Sabbath. I'm not really crazy about the, I think they could have done more with the inner artwork there. Uh, no pictures of the guys or anything, but uh, what a song selection. Similar to the Steve Miller band, they concentrated on just like a couple of albums and then filled in the rest. So you get the best of the first album, uh, almost all of it, almost all of the second album, and then like track, or sides three and four are like, um, the best of the rest you know so you get like tomorrow's dream awesome changes sweet leaf children of the grave sabbath bloody sabbath oh my god laguna sunrise Snowblind, nib uh and that's the the second uh, half the first is all like from uh, the first and then from paranoid so you know what those songs are awesome 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 this is a great listen put this on it's a great way to listen to black sabbath 
and totally legitimate from 1977. A lot of people rocking out to that. This one I'm not so big on. This is the Grateful Dead. What a long, strange trip it's been. It looks a lot similar to that one. <laughs> Warner Brothers in the 70s, same thing, but they, at least they tried a little harder with the uh, inner artwork there. But this does not have Casey Jones on it. It's like, I, a lot of people, I think, know Casey Jones if you're going to do a best of, you know, hit compilation. But uh, aside from that, you know, it has Truckin' and uh, Dark Star and High Time. I had a high time. I love how it has High Time on here. Um, Tennessee Jed and... and uh, Cosmic Charlie, all the great stuff like that. Got single edit of Dark Star. Um, yeah, Grateful Dead. I'm, it's okay. It's not as good as the Black Set, but I, I like the Grateful Dead albums. I, that kind of sounds kind of patchworky, kind of like the shirt. I will argue that if you do not have Kiss as double platinum, you do not have a complete Kiss collection. Again, repeat, sing along with me. This is the first Kiss album I ever had. Um, yeah, but it was. I had these on uh, eight track, actually, eight tracks. And, um, Awesome, awesome way to be introduced to Kiss when you're, you know, six years old. And uh, the, the the faces there and the, uh, what do we got? We got a record thing in here, gold record award you can fill out and order form and all that kind of stuff. But this has uh, special versions of uh, Strutter and Black Diamond and Calling Dr. Love that are a little bit more of a remix. I'm not so much into when they do that, but when I was six years old, you know, I, I didn't realize that was being done. So <laughs> I just thought that they were cool. I thought this album rocked you know, two records rocking from, you know, beginning to end, basically is blown away. Kiss, double platinum. My parents used to play cards with my, uh, you know, in-laws and I'd walk by the card table with them. Get that out of here. There were a lot of artists that actually weren't too friendly, apparently, to compilations. There were some that didn't really have any for the longest time, like Bob Seger didn't have one until well into the 90s, the CD era, ACDC. Uh, same way Fleetwood Mac didn't have one with the Stevie Nicks incarnation for about... Uh, I don't know, like 12 years after they started coming out with those hits. Uh, Journey didn't have one until well, almost like, I think, 89 until theirs came out. They'd been with Steve Perry making hits since uh, 78. They didn't have one for all that time. Uh, you know, So there was a lot that didn't have them. Uh, Bob Marley and the Wailers did, though, and this was absolutely huge. Uh, legend. This was a huge seller. You go over to a lot of people's houses back in the uh, vinyl era and... Uh, You'd ask, hey, do you have any reggae? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, this would be the one they'd pull out. <laughs> I got this one. But yeah, this is uh, this is basically what... Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, this is basically uh, what most people, you know, they needed from Bob Marley. It's uh, all the stuff that most people know. Could You Be Loved, No Woman, No Cry, with the uh, live version on here. I Shot the Sheriff, uh, Redemption Song, Waiting in Vain. Of course, One Love, Is This Love, Exodus, Stir It Up, Jammin'. Wow, they're all on here, and so is Buffalo Soldier. So Bob Marley and the Whalers, great, great artwork on this too. Just you know, the the great photo on the front that's become iconic at this point, and then then that when you open it up, uh, and then these great uh, you know like uh, portraits there on the back again, great uh, photos of different concerts and whatever. So just a great package all around. Bob Marley legend. You can see why this is a huge seller and kept going and going and going for. Uh, for many a year, uh, Madonna, <laughs> the Immaculate Collection. This was huge, too. This came out in 1990, so she's again at the peak. The new song on here is Justify My Love. I was working at Blockbuster Video at the time. I still remember the whole, like, video stunt where MTV banned the video and wouldn't show it. But you could go to your local Blockbuster, and they had the video. It was the first time I'd seen people rent a video, a music video single. And, and they were gone. I mean, we had like 15 copies. They were gone. They were always out. People had to see this video. And of course, it's available on YouTube. You can check it out. It's, it's you know, it does show naked breasts. It shows stuff that you wouldn't see on MTV, but it's uh, pretty tame uh, to today. This was done in a, a Q sound. This was, uh, uh, these songs don't sound like the originals. So these are all remixes. And uh, I prefer the originals on a lot of these. So I don't really hear this a lot. Into the Groove. I would hope they would put the original on here just so it can finally get an album release. And they still... You know, put a different version on there. Uh, the Police, the singles, Every Breath You Take. You know the story behind this? Remember this from 1986? This was, uh, I think they called it quits by then, and we're going to do one more thing. They were going to get together and re-record all of their old hits for this new album. These were all going to be re-recordings in completely different fashions. You know, not, not sounding anything like the original. This was their idea, and one of them, I want to say it was Stuart Copeland. It could have been Andy Summers, but one of them broke their wrist or something and then wasn't able to complete it. So the only song they were able to do 
was uh, Don't Stand So Close To Me, 86. And you know how, if you don't know how that sounds, check that out. It's totally different from the familiar version. And can you imagine a whole album sounding like that? That was apparently uh, the original playing with the police, uh, Every Breath You Take, the singles. Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits from 1967. This was huge. This was a way to get positively 4th Street, uh, which was uh, only a single at the time. So to get that on the album, you had to get this. And of course, Blowing in the Wind, Rainy Day Women 12 and 34, and Mr. Tambourine Man, and Just Like a Woman, Like a Rolling Stone, my favorite Bob Dylan song at all time is on here. Of course, you're going to miss the great album tracks from Blonde on Blonde and Bringing It On Home and Highway 61 Revisited. I mean, there's so many great songs on there. But if you're looking for concise and just the super, super popular stuff, Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits from 1967, it was, it was definitely from the time, and a lot of people had that. Double album, Greatest Hits Volume 2 followed up in the 70s, but, you know, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of great stuff on there, but it's, this, is, this was pretty much iconic. Worst of Jefferson Airplane, gotta love that title. Very generous, again, with like 14 songs on here. Of course, it's got all the hits. Um, you know, I think most casual, casual Jefferson Airplane fans might just want this and Surrealistic Pillow, and they'd probably be happy. Uh, this has all the other great songs from all the other albums on there, the big, you know, whatever they came out with as a single. And, of course, you know, the big two, White Rabbit, Somebody to Love, but great overall uh, thing. Uh, Changes Bowie. <clears throat> Great compilation to get into him. Um, of course, he's got all those great album tracks, too, that weren't on there. But Ryko uh, came out with an extended one uh, that, you know, did it all. <laughs> Went all the way up to the 80s with the changes, Bowie. But I never had that album. I always had the, you know, the other ones. I, David Bowie, one person I was not introduced to by a Greatest Hits album. So there's that. ELO, though, had this on 8-track. I think this is from 78. This is ELO's Greatest Hits. It's from 78, so it doesn't have Don't Bring Me Down on it. But, you know... This is all their hit singles and the single versions, Living Thing and, uh, you know, Mama Ma Bell, Strange Magic, Rock, Rock Aria, and does not have Do Ya. I don't understand why it doesn't have Do Ya. <laughs> Telephone Line, Can't Get It Out of My Head, they are all a part of that. I've played this eight track over and over again. Weird, looks like a medal I got in junior high band or something on that cover. Uh, the Best of Blondie came out in 1984, and that was, uh, you know, they, they were kind of done then. They, they had their last big hit around 82, Titus High. Uh, but this has all of them on there, Titus High and One Way or Another. This was the only way to get Call Me on a Blondie album for a long time. Uh, but this has the uh, dual version of uh, Sunday Girl, has a remix of In the Flesh, Dreaming, and Atomic is on here, so that's great. Ripper to Shreds, an early one. Only thing is, Heart of Glass is on here as some sort of remix with this whirring, like, wind sound, and it's, all, like, almost a minute longer. I don't like the Heart of Glass that's on there. I wish they would have just put the regular version. Billy Joel's Greatest Hits, this came out in 1985, high to his success. This has all, I mean, this was a double album, so this has a lot of great songs on there. Pretty much all his hit singles. Of course, you're going to miss some of the great album tracks, but a lot of the great album tracks are on here, like Scenes from Italian Restaurants on here. That wasn't a single. That's, that's my favorite Billy Joel song. But, you know, you get the 80s hits, Uptown Girl, and Tell Her About It. You get uh, Big Shot and My Life and all that. Got to watch out, though, for the vinyl. The vinyl has single edits. So does the first issue of the CD, which has the red and white spine. If you want album versions, you got to get the newer one with the black and white spine. Billy Joel's Greatest Hits. Queen's Greatest Hits. That was absolutely huge. That is actually where Under Pressure was released first. Under Pressure is actually a track, a new track for Greatest Hits. They just re-released it on Hot Space when it, comes up, when it came out. And if you look at the back of Hot Space, the font is off for <laughs> Under Pressure like it was added to the uh, artwork later. Probably stay away from these later Queen. But, but Greatest Hits, I love the fact that that's been re-released on vinyl just as it was. There's some edits on there, like Fat Bottom Girl is the edit. I don't, I don't particularly care for the edit of that, but can't have it all. But you do get a lot of great uh, Queen songs on Greatest Hits. The Cars Greatest Hits came out in 85. Um, Tonight She Comes was a new song for this at the time. But this has all the, well, most of the great songs from the first album. You still want to get the first album because this doesn't have Bye Bye Love on it. or This doesn't have Moving in Stereo. This just has the singles. But it's one great single after another, and a lot of people had this in 85. Um... This has two uh, tracks that are only on CD and cassette. So you kind of get ripped off if you get the record. They used to do that in the 80s a lot. They'd have, uh, you know, you couldn't fit as much uh, music on a record. So they to get you to try out this new CD thing, they would put bonus tracks on the CD. I think um, 
Probably it's police synchronicity was the first time I'd ever heard of that uh, happening. Funkadelic's got a great one. Music for your mother. This is an incredible compilation. It came out right, right at the end there with all kinds of great Funkadelic stuff on here and single edits, or not single edits, single mixes of things too that are in mono, like can you get to that and you can't mix what you can't measure. Those sound great. I think those sound better on here than they do on the original albums just because they're single mixes and they sound, they sound great. But yeah, music for your mother from Funkadelic and early comp from those guys. Incredible all the way through. Here's an example of one I don't really get. It's like Warner Brothers started putting out all these compilations. And so they started Deep Purple, When We Rock, We Rock, When We Roll, We Roll. It only has, I like the, the cover art's interesting. It looks like a, you know, spaceship, whatever, but. Okay, space trucking, that's fine. Then we go all the way back to Kentucky Woman. Then Hard Road, Ring That Neck. That's an instrumental, right? Burn, Woman from Tokyo Live, which, is that lot? There's like. Woman from Tokyo Live and Highway Star Live. And one of them isn't even live. That's a misprint. A hush going way back again. And then Smoke on the Water. It's just, just listen to the Deep Purple out. This, I never understood. That's a very strange compilation. A lot of people had this. It's probably just going to turn up white. Uh, MU, the very best of Jethro Tull. Great way to get yourself introduced if you just kind of don't want to meander into like too much of the flute <laughs> stuff and just want the hit singles. Like uh, Bungle in the Jungle and Aqua Long and uh, Living in the Past and Skating Away and Teacher, they're all on here. So this is this is probably enough Jethro Tull for most people. Another one with a whole white cover was uh, James Taylor, Greatest Hits. That was a big one too. That that was pretty much all the James Taylor uh, that anyone uh, needed. Stevie Wonder's Original Music Aquarium. This used to be huge too. This was cool because he was actually involved in this. And the songs kind of seg together, and it's, uh, you know, got a couple of mixes on here. But, yeah, 70s Stevie Wonder is what this is all about. This does not go back to, the, like, the 60s Motown stuff. This is all the 70s, more like funk stuff, like Living in the City and Superstition is on here. And uh, Frontline, um, the, the Master Blaster. So this is actually Higher Ground is on here. Awesome. Original Music Aquarium. Okay, uh, so like if you're doing country, we talk real quick. Rest in peace, Mickey Gilly. Most country fans just had the compilations like this one, or here's a later one. If you want the later hits from Mickey Gilly, biggest hits. But yeah, um, country people like, uh, you know, Johnny Lee, you just need an album full of single hits. That's all you need from him. You know, Ronnie Millsap, same way. If you're going to do somebody like, uh, oh, Hank Williams, earlier stuff, make sure that you don't get electronically... A reproduced sound. You don't want that. See that? You don't want that. If you're going to do old, old, like 40s and 50s stuff like Hank Williams. If you're going to do a country artist like like Willie Nelson or, um, you know, like Dolly Parton or, or somebody like that, Johnny Cash that's had a really long career, or Merle Haggard, you probably want to stay away from some of these earlier comps like this. You probably want to go for more for like a career-spanning thing where it's just got their really big songs. Some of the comps with people like that are kind of questionable. They take old recordings before they were popular and they try to say this is the best of Patsy Cline. That is not the best of Patsy Cline. We all know what the best of Patsy Cline is. Okay, so going back to the good ones, uh, Simon and Garfunkel's Greatest Hits. This was huge. Again, coming out right after they had broken up in 1972. Mrs. Robinson, uh, Sound of Silence, I Am a Rock, uh, you know, America, uh, even up to Bridge Over Troubled Water. So it goes pretty much their full career. And even kind of looks like Bridge Over Troubled Water. The cover a little bit. It's kind of got the same. <laughs> but yeah, Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits. Uh, Chicago's, uh, what is this, nine? Chicago you know, numbered all of their albums and considers this one of the numbers. I think this is Chicago nine or something. But this is their greatest hits. This has a lot of the uh, singles with Peter Cetera, some of the early stuff with him, like Feeling Stronger Every Day and Saturday in the Park, Just You and Me, Make Me Smile. All those, and then it has like the single edits of the earlier stuff, like Beginnings and uh, 25 or 6 to 4. Has any, does anybody know what time it is? This does not have that, what is that, Questions 25 and 67 or whatever. I'm surprised that song's not on here. Color My World is on here, though, in, a, in an edit, but Chicago's Greatest Hits. Moody Blues, this is the Moody Blues. Interesting that uh, Nights in White Satin is considered a 70s hit, even though it came out in 67, 68. It wasn't as popular then. It was re-released as a single in 72 in preparation for this compilation. And that's when it became a huge hit. I think it went all the way to number two on the U.S. Billboard charts. It's interesting. I was uh, checking out Sirius XM and the 70s channel was playing Nights in White Satin, you know, a hit from 72. 
and the 60s channel was playing Get Together from the Youngbloods from 69, which would make the 60s channel actually playing a more current song than the 70s channel. I wonder how often that's worked out like that. Anyway, <laughs> this is what uh, resulted from the re-release and the big hit of uh, Nights in White Satin. It was put on here. These songs are segged together as well, just like the Stevie Wonder thing. So I think the Moody Blues probably had did have something to do with this. But this is a great collection, a great overview of uh, their songs. Some of their albums can be a little spotty. So this is a great way to get introduced to them and get a lot of hits and get a legitimate album from 1974 that a lot of people had in their uh, vinyl collection. ZZ Top, the early days represented in the best of ZZ Top from 1977. This has, of course, Tush and LaGrange, Waiting on the Bus, Goes into Jesus and Love, uh, Jesus Just Left Chicago, as it should. Also heard it on the X, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, Just Got Paid, Francine. They are all on here. You're not going to find like stages or legs or, or you know, sharp dressed man or any of that thing. This is a uh, ends in uh, 77, but that's actually a great comp that a lot of people had as well. Bird's Greatest Hits. Again, from the time, legitimate. It's probably even got the old Columbia. It does. Do I? <laughs> so you know it's from that time. Mr. Tambourine Man, Eight Miles High, and, you know, Mr. Space Man, 5D. I feel a whole lot better. Um, what was their other uh, huge one? Mr. Tambourine Man and Turn. Oh, Turn, Turn, Turn. Yeah, that's on here as well. So they got great albums, though. You want to check out their early albums. But, again, huge, huge, huge compilation for the... For the birds. Bee Gees. I think I showed this on my Australian one. Look at how this folds out. This is from 1979. Do you have any idea how huge the Bee Gees were in 1979? Well, in 1980, they weren't huge at all. So this was the last, <laughs> this was the last gasp. This is, they, they, they released this right at the, like as the firework had, had just exploded and the things were coming down. That's when they released this. Okay, Jive Talking, Night Fever, You Should Be Dancing, Staying Alive, their own version of If I Can't Have You, uh, Tragedy, you know, they're all a part of the Bee Gees greatest on that wonderful, I mean, I know that other people are on this, but I, oh, it's, that's got a custom label, it's got a custom inner sleeve, look at that. I've never seen a custom inner sleeve that's, uh, that's clear like that, unless it's from a, um, unless it's like a store sleeve from like Peaches or Co-op or something. Okay, so what do we got here? Yeah, New Order Substance. We're getting a little bit later now, but this is a lot of people's introduction to a New Order when they came out with this. A lot of the, a lot of the mixes everybody wanted were collected on here. You know, you didn't want the album. You wanted the 12-inch mixes or the 7-inch mixes, so they were smart enough to do that. Before this, of course, New Order was Joy Division and their Substance compilation. I know a lot of people have the, the one with the lines on it now, but back in my day, everybody just had Substance with the gray... Uh, with the gray cover. Uh, what are we up to now? Once to stay away. Oh, here's Depeche Mode too. A lot of people, Depeche Mode, catching up with Depeche Mode. That's how you caught up with them. Around 86, 85, before they got really big. Some of their early stuff on there. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. This was so cool. This is probably the last uh, good one I'll show here. This uh, Greatest Hits. Um, look at all those tracks. This was every hit single he had and then went out and did Mary Jane's Last Dance as a new track. Now, sometimes when somebody does a new track for a greatest hits, it, it gets mid-level player. It's pretty good. Like Tonight She Comes from the Cars or uh, Second Win, You're Only Human from Billy Joel. That was the new tracks that were on there. But uh, yeah, Mary Jane's Last Dance was huge. Absolutely huge. And so a lot of people had this uh, this CD or cassette back in the day. The, uh, the artwork has changed, though, for Tom Petty's greatest hits. Okay, you know, they're not all great. Sometimes there were misfires. There were Donna Summer on the radio. Um, people had this. I don't know how many people were happy with it, though, when they played it. It's a double album that came out in the height of her career. But it has like a three-minute version of I Feel Love. It has a medley of uh, the two, you know, Hot Stuff into Bad Girls or vice versa. Both of them like two and a half minutes long each or 254 or something. I mean, just cut up version. You would think there'd be 12-inch remixes. You'd think there'd be like extended... No. Edited it down to like nothing. Nothing. And then medleyed into each other. This is not... Mm -mm, nope. She's got other stuff. Endless Summer and the Donna Summer Collection. I would go with the... Stay away from on the radio. Pink Floyd, probably not the way you want to go for Pink Floyd. This collection of dance songs. Um, it wasn't that big, but people had it. But it's got a pretty cool, uh, you know, concise version of Shine On You Crazy Diamond, which is more of just the lyrical parts of the song. Uh, it's got, you know, the single version of uh, Another Brick in the Wall. It's got a re-recorded version of Money because they didn't have the rights to the original at the time. It's just not that good. It 
you don't do Pink Floyd like that. This friggin' foreigner. Oh my God. Edits and just for no reason. Like, I get it if it's light my fire and you got to edit four minutes out of the song because it's seven. I get that. Right. Get fine. You basically change the whole feel of the song doing that. So it's a different song. Right. Why in the world would you edit like seven seconds out of every song? Jukebox Hero is the worst. You know how Jukebox Hero is like, stars in his eyes. Do, 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 do. That's how the song ends, right? Not on here. It's like stars in his eyes. Fades out. With like six seconds left. It's like, where's the ending? What? Stupid. You know, long, long way from home, there's no big, that cuts off the beginning of the song that lasts like four seconds. What is, what? oh, and the LP of that has got the slots out so the the tracks are on the inner sleeve, one of them tricks like, like physical graffiti. So it's hard to shove in the shelves, screw that out. Aerosmith's greatest hits so bad, I don't even have it. Imagine if you've never heard Aerosmith's greatest hits. Imagine Sweet Emotion with the entire beginning of the song cut off. Dream On's also edited, but that's extreme. S Sweet Emotion starts with a cymbal clash. That, that's not going to work for me. That's, that, that's a deal breaker. You know, we don't need Aerosmith's greatest hits. They've got other comps. Go with those. I, I can't imagine they would treat... <laughs> sweet emotion like that on another release nirvana's best doesn't you know you want never mind i don't what is this and guns and roses greatest hits you just did appetite for destruction that's the greatest hits right use your illusion whatever so yeah stay away from those those are some ones to stay away from just for bad edits or just the foreigner one especially i don't even that's ridiculous and a live version of hot-blooded Anyway, I'm Robert Fitton. I'm sure I have forgotten a lot of classic compilations that everybody owned back in the day. I just started grabbing them and then ended up with this huge tag. I'm like, okay, it's time to stop. So I might have forgotten a few. If I did, let me know in the comments. But these were ones not released, you know, a year ago or 20 years ago. These are ones from way back in the day. Vinyl. People had them. People treated them just like albums. Some of them had, you know, like single only stuff on there that you couldn't get on another album at the time, like the Rolling Stones one or the Jimi Hendrix one. So they're treated like legit albums. Let me know what you think. Did you have any of these stellar compilations? Because like I said, this was the way I was introduced to most of these artists. So they still mean a lot to me. I'm Robert Fitton. Thank you so much for watching. If you've subscribed, thank you so much. And if you like, uh, consider liking the video and you do, thank you for that as well. Uh, thanks for all the great vinyl community videos that everybody keeps making. I'll keep checking them out and you keep making them and I'll keep making these. Deal. Thanks for watching.